Hello everybody, welcome back. Gonna do just a quick video today. We're gonna talk about parts. I've been getting some questions and uh, I know some of you are right now in the stage of collecting up the parts you're gonna need to build the amp. So we'll run through what will work and what you should look for when you're on uh, eBay or that other one. Um, plate can plate cap should look like this. I like to get the ones with the ring connector on it in because it's got a little ferrule uh, and a threaded shaft, and then there's a little ring nut that holds it. So all it takes is just one hole in the front panel, and the ring nut tightens down and holds that in place. This one's a 50 picofarad. Now, now if you can see the gaps but the plate spacing should be around a sixteenth of an inch roughly to hold off the uh, high voltage roughly sixteenth of an inch if it has uh, if you see any of them that are that show a measurement it should be uh, around two kV to maybe two and a half uh, maybe almost three kV uh, would be even better I guess anything from about 2.8 kV to 3 would we'll just put it that way would be about right okay that's a 50 picofarad cap this one would work it's a little small come on camera here where are we at <laughs> this is a 20 I think it's a measures 24 picofarad and again has the uh, threaded connector uh, shank on it you just put a ring nut on it in one hole and it mounts to the front panel this would work but we could pull we have to pull a trick with it by padding it with another uh, ceramic capacitor to bring it up to uh, around 40 35 40 depending on uh, the tune circuit you end up with but uh, we could make that work if you couldn't find anything the shaft type controls are getting really hard to find so, okay, that takes care of those. Uh, the load controls. They should look more like this. Closer spacing. These, anything down to where you could slip uh, like a matchbook cover in between the plates is about right. And they should be in the neighborhood of uh, 350 to 400 puff, maybe even 250. Uh, and again we could pad it with a capacitor to get where we want here's another type similar again it's the kind I like it's got the little ring nut on it They're just one hole and you put it through the panel and tighten it down and then there's this style that's out there this has no long shaft you won't be able to put a knob on it but this would work just as just as good this is, I think, measures uh, 250 picofarad, and I'd probably pad that with like a 100 picofarad cap at uh, a kV or something. Okay, that's the load controls. All right, plate blocking caps. Those are almost unobtainium, like they think they're made of platinum. Crazy prices. There's a simple source, if any of you have torn apart a microwave oven, look for this part of the thing sticking out of the magnetron tube. It'll come out with four bolts, or the tube it will, rather, and you, when you peel the shell, the bottom of the box off, you'll find that this little thing is mounted with four little rivets. You can see the hole there on the corners four little rivets and actually they're just uh, punched through and swedged as that's what's holding on run a drill through those about an eighth inch drill and those will just peel right out and there'll be a couple little coils on these wires straighten them just kind of unroll some of that leave the copper attached but just unroll it a little bit so you can straighten it and when you get done 
bending it around you're going to hook those two together and then solder them and they're going to look just like that that you can, you want to parallel those so this is one connection to your blocking cap and this plate you can run a, a screw and a little uh, ground lug off of here and you're going to make your other connection uh, to that on over to your uh, pie tank circuit and that's a dandy little I think they're around a 500 picofarad at uh, 3000 volt blocking cap real inexpensive um, and easy to get out of the bottom of the micro the magnetron tube from microwave oven okay uh, input trimmers I'm currently using this style it's what they refer to as a pinch cap it has a threaded screw in the center and as you tighten it up with a screwdriver adjust it clamps little thin plates together each plate is separated by a little sheet of mica it's real thin and as they pinch together then your capacitance goes up these are again are hard to find they're almost like twelve dollars a piece but you occasionally will find them out there that, but that's one type um, that would be the input this would be from your on the end of the input coil where your radio connects to on the grid end of that a cap like this is going to work you don't need a knob on these because these are all you're going to do is you're going to set your SWR so that there's a, a good match between the radio and the bottom of the tube and so it's just going to be a set it once and forget it but those would work the type with shafts here's what they look like a little smaller than the plate ones but again these would work that's about a this probably is on the edge of not being enough I think this is about 30 picofarad you'd have to pad that a little bit with uh, probably another hundred picofarad across there something like that and this one here this would be good on the uh, radio end this is the radio end is the higher uh, picofarad and the tube end is the lesser of the two you look in the schematics if you've got them and you'll see what I'm talking about there um, well let's see yeah, 140, 140, and one needs to be 425, and uh, that's actually measured. If you look at my schematics, uh, I've got a star. That means that that value is the tested value when I pulled that apart. Now, in an upcoming video, I'll tell you how to come up with this and uh, how to uh, tune this without it even being connected to the tube. You can do this on right on your workbench uh, on a little piece of copper plate or aluminum you just bolt these down and, and test it out and I'll, I'll get to that in an upcoming video okay those out of the way uh, I was asked about connector where do I find a connector for the top of the anode of the 4CX250's well, right here you're looking at the simplest version you can get real fancy and bend a, a copper, heavy copper wire loop back the ends to where you can put a brass bolt in it and make a pinch clamp. That would work. But a stainless steel hose clamp, this is the parasitic. I have a piece of uh, braid from RG8 uh, 8, X, or no, not, not 8X, but RG8X, or no, yeah, uh, no, I think it's just RG8. Yeah, just pulled the braid off an RG8, and uh, it's held clamped against the tube with the hose clamp, and that's all you need. Of course, now this was out of a tube tester, so I needed to be able to just loosen this quick, pull it off, drop another tube in, clamp it back down. And so both ends of the parasitic had a, a piece of braid to where it may, always made it flexible, and it wouldn't break off. But yeah, um, you'll have your ceramic chimney below this so this hose clamp actually holds that ceramic chimney in place 
you just slide it down against it and then tighten it down just like so okay now your screen relay when you pull your microwave oven apart and you're scrapping it out look up on the front panel this is the thing with the numbers and stuff on it there'll be buttons down below this pull this out and take a close look at it every one of them should have a nice 15 or 20 amp this one here is marked at 16 amps it's a 12 volt relay comes out with uh, there's two solder tabs there and there's two on the other end so just four pins to unsolder and that'll come out and that's a 12 volt relay right next to it is a little sensitive 12 volt relay and I think it's about two or three amps and you could use this as your key and relay and let it operate the 24 volts to key the screen and your uh, uh, antenna relay but there's a source for relays right on the microwave oven control panel uh, real easy to get even the transformer could be used if you needed a key and circuit voltage because most of these are a center tap and see there's two diodes there I think that's a 25 volt cap so this is probably a 16 or maybe a 12 volt transformer and you look on the back the heavy the real heavy lines there you can see that's your 110 input and you'll see it runs over to a plug and that plug will go up to the power cord and a fuse but uh, yeah real simple little transformer it's got uh, six pins unsolder is real easy and that will give you a, a nice screen relay and a, another key and relay if, if, you, if you need it hook it up that way okay people have been asking about tube data okay these are simple to get and very important to have so that you can uh, see and what the parameters for the whatever tube you have if you've got a 4CX250 you're going to want the sheet for that tube if you've got a 150 you're going to want the sheet for that tube they're all just a little bit different uh, type into Google the 4CX250 Baker then a little space and then put data sheet and then I just type in capital letters PDF and most of the time it'll pop up it'll be the top of the page and it'll be a uh, a site uh, I think it's Frank uh, POC net dot net or something like that and you can find the iMac sheets for all those tubes and you should have one for every tube number that you get so you can look in there and come up with the parameters that you need now most all of these are the same as far as bias you're going to want to look at the the data probably can't see it in the camera but you're going to want to look at the it says radio frequency linear amplifier grid driven and it says SSB and this is for class AB1 these different these columns there's a thousand volt plate a 1500 volt plate and a 2000 volts on the plate ratings and it shows you all the parameters for whatever plate voltage you, you might want to use plus it'll tell you the value of the uh, impedance the plate impedance that you're going to come up with and that'll vary from tube to tube um, this 150 ends up being 4750 ohms and the 250s are just a bit lower they come out at 4000 ohms so that's why I say you should have a, a sheet for each one of your tubes uh, that way you can just go right to it and find out what it needs for bias what it needs for screen and so on and so forth plus uh, I was asked if the pinouts 
are all these the tubes are all the same yes they are and pretty much on the back of each one of these sheets oh that shows a graph chart okay I lied that and shows nothing that and shows a graph chart anyhow most of them <laughs> or somewhere in the book anyhow it'll show the pin out the numbering of the pins how they're laid out and numbered and it'll give you a list of what pin number does what for each tube so that's why I say these data sheets are kinda handy to have okay oh yeah there's one couple more couple more items I'm getting ahead of myself here alright I forgot to tell you about the antenna relay this is this company my favorite uh, I'm not paid by them I'm not affiliated with them it's just they happen to be a really good source for parts and I can pretty much rely on them having it when I go to get it uh, sometimes they don't show stuff in the catalog if they're getting close to being out of it so they do have an online presence surpluscenter.com um, but their antenna what I would use for an antenna relay their part number is 11 dash one one nine five it's 24 volt three pole double throw it's a DC relay and it's only 385 plus shipping very nice heavy relay it's uh, 10 amps the contacts are nice heavy-duty contacts and uh, that'll work fine for your for your antenna uh, transmit receive relay a three pole double throw so you could even run a light or something else on there if you wanted or a, in some cases if your fans too loud you can even use one of the contacts to speed the fan up a little bit but uh, normally I just use it to drive another another contactor to, to run the step start or something like that um, but yeah that's a good relay low cost and they usually have a, a pretty good stock of them and of course I think the fan early on before I even got started I think I told you about the fans where are they at okay that's a 26 cubic foot per minute it runs on 48 volts DC 895 this is a Rotron fan and it'll supply you with enough back pressure to run uh, I think it figures out it'll run enough there's enough air in there for three of the tubes that uh, static air pressure is 0.87 and uh, it's 26 cubic feet a minute most of the tubes only require about uh, seven or eight cubic feet a minute and around at least a, a 0.5 uh, back pressure so okay thank you and if you have any questions I bet I can't find it now that I want it <laughs> zippity doo -da. Here, here we go alright you can contact me directly if you want and I, I can answer your questions be a lot quicker um, I appreciate comments but sometimes it takes me a while because uh, where I'm at I'm offline off grid and our internet is really slow out here so uh, uh, I have to wait until I go in town before I can answer questions but email I can answer it right away alright thank you and uh, next part I'll, we'll talk about uh, input circuits and tuning network thank you see you then <laughs>